Hey, good morning, folks. This is AJ, and we're going to take a trip. I got called last night to for a church in Charlottesville, Virginia, to come up there and do an estimate on they want to do a new sound system and video system, projector, and all this other fun stuff um, in their church. So let's get to rolling. Hey folks, this is AJ the CEO. If this is your first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So I am here and um, this is really awesome how things work. This is actually the church that um, that held the funeral of the guy who taught me how to play jazz in church. Uh, was a musician and friend um, for so many years. So it's it's interesting that I'm back here. When I saw it, I thought that's what it was, but it's wow. So oh well, let's get inside. And um, I'm here early. So let me see if I can um, text them and let them know that I'm actually here and we can get inside and see what we can do to help everybody here. All right, folks, I actually... <laughs> I re-recorded this yesterday when I got back from choir rehearsal and from Charlottesville and watching the video I noticed how tired I was because it didn't make sense what I was talking about so I'm re-recording this all today to go through with y'all what we're actually going to put together so the I think I don't want to necessarily say this is going to be simple but this is not going to be a very complex type of job so what's going to happen is they have their fellowship hall which currently has i think like a 55 inch screen tv mounted to the wall with a collection of um, devices to bring in video into the sanctuary um, from the sanctuary into the fellowship hall as well as um, the ability to have it hooked up to local television and their blu-ray player dvd player um, and vcr um, as well as they have two wedges that are on the platform, the stage, for sound inside that room. So what they want to do is get rid of those wedges, put speakers in the ceiling, and get rid of the TV completely and put a 120-inch um, motorized projector screen with a projector. So the goal is, and now I can do this right compared to last night, um, these are some of the things that we're, I am toying with putting together for them. Um, let's walk through it. I'm bouncing between two projectors right now. Both projectors are going to be laser projectors to avoid bulbs and all this other stuff. Now the ceiling, and I have some pictures I'll um, spurse throughout this video. Um, the ceiling is about 9 to 10 feet, so it's not really that high. Um, but either way, we're looking at this Epson Powerlight um, 6000 lumen um, laser projector or this um, Sony VPL VH um, PHZ 10 5000 lumen now the advantage of this compared to like at my church there's no direct light here um, they do have a couple of lights over the stage but they can be controlled there's no other windows or anything there it's in the center of the room the windows are in the back so um, I think the especially with that powerful lumen of a projector and how close it is i mean we're thinking about this projector is probably going to be about eight to ten feet away from where the screen is going to be so not that much light that we have to fight with and it'll be a very bright picture so if we look at the back of this projector the back of this projector See, we have, now they do have HD base T. That is how they're feeding in the video right now from the sanctuary into the 
fellowship hall. So whatever projector I use, it needs to be compatible with this because then we can avoid having to do any other additional hookups and all the stuff. So we have a network connection and I need to find out how close a network jack is because I will run a network connection to this. That will make it easier when people need to connect to it. But the idea is we're going to have this connected to the network. This is going to be connected to the line that's coming from the sanctuary. We're going to run HDMI 1 into a wall plate that we're going to put um, probably in the back of the fellowship hall and possibly um, see if I can do a splitter or some way to where whichever one gets plugged in gets um, attention um, so I can have one closer to the front if need be. Um, that's going to be split and then HDMI number two is going to be fed into a jack behind where the Blu-ray player is. Um, really not going to use any of the computer um, connections, the VGAs, kind of want to avoid those. Um, not really doing any audio into this and I'm not going to be using the RS-232 connection um, or even USB or service. I don't think any of those are needed. Um, now, from a standpoint with the other Sony projector, which for whatever reason, they don't have pictures here on B and H. Let me see if I can get some better pictures of the back here. Why is no one trying to show the back of this projector? There we go. Let's look at these. We look in the back of this not as many connections but this is a um, HD base T as well two HDMI ends that is a VGA connection and then we also have the RS-232 control so in basic it has the exact same connections I am leaning more towards the Epson just because it's more powerful um, in lumens but if I get any pushback I do have a secondary projector to go to now both of these are capable of 1080p and that is what we are pushing for even though their system their video system that's in the sanctuary is only pushing out at um, 1080i um, and what we're also going to do is they have a, a collection of stuff with the amp, soundboard, and other um, devices, like I said, Blu-ray player and things like that. We're going to remove from that cabinet and we're going to put all of that into a wall mount and we're going to move that somewhere up and out of the way so people really don't have to deal with it. Put it behind lock and key um, for the trustees and media to have access to so no one can go in messing with it. Um, now some of the ceiling speakers that we're looking at going with are these Yamaha NSIC 800 8 inches. We're going to get about eight of these and go throughout the ceiling. Now there's not going to be any subwoofers or any wedges or anything. All of the sound is going to be coming from the ceiling. Um, and I think they were originally thinking about putting 16 speakers in the ceiling. I think that's kind of overkill. I think these will be more than enough for everything that we're going to do. I need to make sure I compare these with the amp that they have right now to make sure I don't need any additional power to handle all of these. But I think these will work very well. Got a standard um, universal projector mount should be fine because like I said, we're only going to be around eight to 10 feet away from the screen. And this screen is an elite screens, 120 inch motorized screen. And we come in here what I like about it, there's the infrared right there and they don't show it in here. They show it in the video, which I don't want to play. There is a RJ45 Ethernet connection right here at the top. So I can run that to wherever to, um, to use the controls to open, I mean, to <laughs> drop down the screen and pull it up. Um, and then there's a power as well then goes here. Now they also have another dongle that connects here that is for the IR reader and there is a connection for the projectors that support it that do um, power I forgot the term but you can hook it up to where when the projector is turned on it will send power to drop the screen at the same time. Um, so that gives us some flexibility on what we can do with this. This could be on a wall or ceiling mounted 
Um, I'm kind of thinking about wall mounted right now. I didn't get a chance to check for studs, um, but I think we should be good there. Now, if we go back to our cart over here. Now, the other thing that they mentioned is they're pulling in sound from the sanctuary. And this is the same issue we talked about when we're live streaming in audio sync issues. And this is what they're experiencing is not noticeable, but it was noticeable enough for them to mention it to me that when they, in their current setup, the sound, the video is about a half a second behind the audio. So what I wanna do is get this Behringer Shark um, feedback destroyer which also has an audio delay and what we're going to do is because we're managing all of the sound we're going to run the sound from the sanctuary into this to delay the sound so that when it comes through the speakers it's going to be in sync with the video that's what we got that for um, i normally don't use these um, super long um, hdmi cables but normally, in what I normally would use, I would run HDMI um, to an Ethernet converter and then run it. Um, my concern with that is just the power that needs to be in place to do that. So having one single cable, um, I'll pay extra for this um, so that I can do longer runs because normally HDMI can only go 20 feet without some type of amplifier built into the cable. So that's what we're gonna be doing with this. Um, just got some generic monster um, uh, 16 gauge cable for our speakers that will be in the ceiling. Now for the wall plate, I got this little um, right angle adapter because most of the time um, when you use one of these keystones, um, and actually I need to do a different angle with this one, they come in right here so the cable has to come in this direction now I don't know how much space is between the drywall and the wall of where this is going to be mounted so I got a right angle one and I need to change this to the one that goes like this instead of like that but um, I'm gonna get two of these so it makes this will be easier so the cable will just come down instead of having to be stuck behind it that should give me some space for that now they also want to do some distribution um, for announcements and get rid of their bulletin boards pretty much. So what we're going to do is they're using a rolling video switcher that I need to look up um, the specs of. But what we're going to do is actually put this um, SDI distribution back in the media booth, run the current SDIs into this from the switcher directly into this box and then this box will run cables in the future because that's not what's happening in this project to the vestibule as well as the fellowship hall um, excuse me not the fellowship hall downstairs um, where multiple TVs are going to be so that they can loop announcements over and over throughout the day um, now with that we all they also don't want to keep the whole system on to do that so what we're planning on doing is either run have a secondary computer that just runs the announcements easy worship worship extreme whatever um, software they decide to use because uh, they're using easy worship right now put that on the screen and just let that do a slideshow repeated and then that is that computer is going to be directly connected to all of the TVs throughout the sanctuary that's going to be um, throughout the church that are going to be using this and then I have to figure out a way to win say services started they don't want the announcements to loop they want to be able to flip over and then all the tvs see what's going on at the same time i need to figure that out without um honestly now that i think about it i don't know if we get all the exact same tvs we can put ir blasters on them all and then we able to just switch over to a different source a different channel so that everything can work like that um, i still got to figure that out but this is laying the groundwork so that we can do this later on and that's really it. I think, like I said, I don't want to say this is going to be simple. The main thing that's going to be my concern is mounting this up on the wall. And I need to see how much this weighs as well, too. Um, it doesn't say. Yeah. Well, it's 33 pounds. Okay, so that's not that bad. It's mainly of just needed i could probably use a lot um two ladders just to hold it up so i can make it level and things like that but that's the only thing so what i'm gonna do 
is I already sent over the estimate to them. Now I just need to wait to hear back on their decision on what we're gonna do when we're gonna move forward with everything. And I will take y'all along with me when we do this, cause this is gonna be fun. Um, and if any of the stuff that I highlighted in here, uh, I know I'm gonna do the projectors anyway, cause this is gonna be my first hands-on time with some laser projectors. Um, normally I have other companies that do this, but this is gonna be my chance for me to delve with these. Um, I'm gonna do an in-depth um, review of these projectors when they come in. I know they probably had other ones out there already, but hey, this is my chance to mess with these. Um, and then if there's any other products that we have in here that you want to have a detailed review of them, please let me know in the comments and I would do that when this stuff comes in. And I, like I said, I will bring y'all along with me when we get this stuff installed. So I hope you like this type of content. If you do, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell the way you get notified when we come out with other videos. And please make sure you share this with other people who are in media ministry or this stuff might be of interest to them. Um, because sharing, liking, subscribing, leaving comments, that tells YouTube that y'all like this and it pushes this out to more people who are kind of just like us and they're interested in the same type of thing. So I really appreciate it because we're still at the point of 90, I mean, excuse me, 78% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. So anyway, this is AJ and we will see you on the next video later.